Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a very common question I get from patients is I'm replacing my testosterone. I've been taking some testosterone shots or gels or whatever and then um, how is that going to affect my hair loss or uh, other areas of my body. So this is a very common thing that we uh, address here at the office. Since a lot of us are replacing our testosterone now as we get older, I thought it was important to record this video. So. If this is a topic that interests you, stick around. I'll try to keep it very simple. And uh, let's talk about that. So we're gonna talk about testosterone replacement, okay? Very important topic. I get this question all the time from patients. We're all getting a little older, so we're looking to replace our testosterone. That's being done much more commonly now. And so there are some implications that we have to be aware of as it pertains to hair loss and to other things. So this is gonna be a sort of a quick, simple video just to give you a little bit idea of testosterone replacement and how it affects our body. So we all have testosterone, male and female, women, men and women have testosterone circulating, different levels of course but it's an important hormone. What it does to the body, both for men and for women, is, has a bunch of functions from, of course, the one that everybody knows is libido, sex drive, sexual performance, um, but there's other things that testosterone can do. It can increase muscle mass. It's important for bone health as well, so we don't get osteoporosis. Uh, also increases the production of red blood cells in the blood in the um, uh, bo blood marrow, so bone marrow. So it is important for all these functions. We know that production of, te of testosterone varies in the men and the women. About 50% of the testosterone is actually produced in the peripheral tissues. The, uh, maybe some of you don't know that, but only about 25% of the testosterone is actually produced by the testicles in the men and the ovaries in the women. In the women. Uh, another 25% is produced by the adrenal glands. Those are glands that sit on top of the kidneys. And so the other 50% is actually converted to the peripheral tissues. There are some precursors like DHEA, DHEA sulfate, and um, androstenedione. Those are the hormone uh, precursors to testosterone that are circulating in our bloodstream and then go to the peripheral tissues and are converted to testosterone. So it's important to know that because a lot of my patients come and say, well, I don't take testosterone, but I take supplements uh, for my workouts and whatever. And they have DHEA or DHEAS. And those are, again, precursor to testosterone. So secondarily, you can actually increase the testosterone that way without even knowing about it. Um, another thing to understand too is that when you test your uh, testosterone levels, you have to separate the free testosterone, which is the active portion, to the uh, bound testosterone. So testosterone, about 98% of testosterone, both in men and women, circulating in the body at any given time is actually bound to proteins in the bloodstream. Some of that uh, connection with the proteins is very strong uh, and some is a little weaker. So the strong connection is made to the sexual hormone binding globulins. And so these connections with the testosterone are really strong. So the testosterone that's connected to these uh, globulins is inactive. It's not going to do anything to your body, but it still shows up in the blood test as you measure your total testosterone. Then there's another connection to another protein in the blood called albumin. That connection is much weaker and the albumin can release testosterone to the tissues as needed. So it'll still show it's bound to albumin, but it, I mean, it's bound in the test as far as the total testosterone, but it's still a little bit active. And then there's the free testosterone, which is only about 2%. And that's the free, freely active testosterone that circulates. So when we test testosterone, we usually order a total testosterone, a free testosterone, and a sex-bound, sex, bound, sex glo sorry, sex hormone binding globulin a testosterone. That way, I can have the whole parameter, and I can calculate uh, how much of that is actually free and active for you. Those are important parameters. As we know also, as we get older, the testosterone levels start to decrease. Now, it's a little bit different for men and women. So I have this uh, graph here. This is for women. Um, you can see about age 50, when women start to get like perimenopausal, menopausal age, uh, the estrogen, which is the male female, the main female hormone starts to drastically drop. The pink line here is actually testosterone or androgen hormones. And so you can see how it drops, but it's much more gradual. We're going to talk about that in a future video about menopause and how it affects women. But 
Uh, in men, we see uh, this kind of stepwise decrease. Of course, it varies between patients or people. Uh, but overall, by the time we get to be age 50, we have less than half of the amount of testosterone we used to have in our 20s and 30s. So with that comes fatigue, loss of muscle mass, loss of sexual libido, um, just overall tiredness and loss of bone mass and all these things that happen as we get uh, a little older and our testosterone drops. So how is testosterone replaced? It can be through injections, bioidentical hormones, non-bioidentical non hormones, gels and creams and all these things. So there's various um, ways to replace testosterone. It's important that you replace it under the supervision of a doctor because you know you don't want to overshoot your testosterone levels and get more than you need because as we're, as we're going to talk a little bit in a little bit in the video here there can be some unwanted consequences of that so you want to make sure you monitor okay but it's a good thing to replace it because it'll give you more energy it'll give you again uh, maintain your muscle mass for women particularly it's important for bone health to, to maintain a level of testosterone that's healthy for them uh, so replacing is important as long as it's done under supervision okay what are the risks of replacing your testosterone? Again, these are risks that are, the more, you, the more you replace your testosterone, the higher the level and the longer the time, the more you're gonna have these undesired welcomes. So the first one we're gonna talk about, which is the main interest for us here, right? It's hair loss. As we know from the previous videos, testosterone converts to DHT, dihydrotestosterone. If you have genetics for hair loss, whether you're a man or a woman, works the same way. The dihydrotestosterone, DHT, will go to the hair follicles that have the genetic receptors and they will start, start to shrink the follicles, so it'll cause follicle miniaturization. So the more testosterone you have, the more DHT you have, the more hair loss you're gonna have. So if you are replacing your testosterone, whether you're a man or a woman, again, and you're noticing more hair loss, then you need to come to talk to me because I can put you in a program where you can still enjoy the testosterone benefits and minimizing the risk of the hair, okay? Miniaturization of the hair is what we see where the hair start to get really nice and thin and weak. And so progressively it'll show as balding, I mean thinning and then eventually balding, okay? Other thing that can happen that's very common, particularly, I mean not particularly, but only males of course, females don't have prostates, but it can enlarge your prostate. The prostate enlargement, benign prostate hypertrophy is also driven by dihydrotestosterone over time. Very common in males. Um, and you have all these symptoms of going to the bathroom multiple times at night, having trouble urinating. Um, there's also a relationship with testosterone levels and prostate cancer. So if you are a patient that has a family history of prostate cancer, you need to be doing checkups with your primary care doctor or your urologist uh, frequently, and testosterone replacement needs to be discussed in the context of your risk for prostate cancer. So don't go just replacing your testosterone, buying it off the internet, you need to get, there's a, there's a way to do this correctly, okay? Another thing that can happen in males is because you're replacing your testosterone, the testicles are not really being stimulated anymore because there's already hormones circulating, so the body understands, okay, I don't need to push the testicles to make more testosterone, and so your testicles tend to atrophy as well. So that's important to know if you are replacing your testosterone. Again, all these things are related to the level and to the time, right? The higher the level, the longer the time, then the more common these are. And also one important thing is it can increase your red blood cell count, which is called polycythemia. So when you have polycythemia, your blood can get really viscous and really uh, thick, and it can lead to strokes and heart attacks and uh, artery arterial clogage. So you need to be aware of that as well. I have patients who have a very strong response as far as the blood the, the blood production and they have to, to uh, donate blood very often because they wanna keep that blood cell count low, okay? So again, one more reason for you to monitor if you're doing your testosterone replacements. In women, what we notice sometimes, depending on the level and, and the, uh, the time of the replacement, is they, they may get a little bit more facial hair, a little bit more body hair, uh, because that's what it does, you know, stimulates hairs to grow in the body. So that's what we see sometimes in women. How to prevent the uh, hair loss of the testosterone? Well, that's when you need to talk, to talk to me, right? I mean, talk about your levels of testosterone, your history of hair loss, your current hair loss, and where you're going with your hair loss. There are medications we can put you on that are DHT blockers, so that means that 
It doesn't really affect your testosterone, it just keeps the testosterone from converting to DHT. And so you still have the benefits from the testosterone, which are very good, and you can, we can protect your hair. So come talk to us and we'll give you an idea of that. And if needed, we can prescribe the therapy for that, okay? So in conclusion, if you are either replacing your testosterone or if you're thinking about replacing it, it needs to be done correctly. It needs to be done under the supervision of an experienced physician, endocrinologist or uh, urologist that understands your organ ecology in the case of women, that understands your hormone profile and it keep, keeps tabs on these uh, hormone levels, okay? There are some things you can experience, some unwanted effects from testosterone. The benefits a lot of times outweigh the risks, uh, but if you do it correctly, then you can minimize the risks too, okay? I'm here if you have questions, call us. We offer free consultations as always. If you like the video, please click the like button down, down below. It helps us. If you want to keep tabs on this content on hair loss and everything like that, uh, subscribe to the channel and click that bell button below, okay? It's been great talking to you again, and I'll see you next time. Take care.